This morning we're at the National Cathedral in Washington, the uh, font of the Episcopal Church in the United States, and it's just, it's a blessing to be here. Let your little light shine. And this morning we have an important conversation which will be led by uh, multi-denominational leaders from the African American Baptists, UCC, Islamic churches in the United States and mosques. Today the conversation is the thing. Being in an important church for a conversation about how people from a multi-faith background can come together and figure out our social pathologies and how we want to work forward. It's very, very inspiring to be here. We're at the National Cathedral in Washington for just that conversation, a conversation about strategy and tactics, a conversation about the, how the historical record in the United States of advancement is brought to bear to today's challenges. And the question is for the parishioners of the church, for the people watching online, and particularly the young people, what's your civil right? What's the social justice that you want to be engaged in? How do you want to learn from the past and apply it to your issues and move us all forward? And um, I hear you speaking from up there in ways in which the church is culpable, but I don't hear that word spoken much. And I'm wondering if we moved the continuum from complicity to culpability, how that may, might look in the church. And I think complicity and culpability go together. And, uh, and so as we talk about complicity, we uh, name the ways in which we're complicit and when we talk about culpability, that's sort of guilt, we have to sort of move beyond that and move toward, uh, if we want to keep it in theological terms, move it toward repentance, which is turning around, naming our sin and doing something different. A collusion is culpability. And recognizing that the religious communities have to take leadership roles uh, if we are going to move this nation forward, particularly in relationship to these issues of racial justice. The great words of a wonderful rabbi who said, some are guilty, but all are responsible, so let's go forth together in our shared responsibility. I see civil rights and religion and politics, uh, I think they're supposed to work together. So Jesus Christ, was political in his own way, uh, which simply means using the power that you have to try to uh, secure the benefits of the people that you represent. So at this moment, we want to invite you to take eight to 10 minutes or so to talk to a couple of folks near you. This is the power of our society bringing together faith leaders who are committed to a vision of a pluralist America. And he broadened the conversation about racial justice to understand, especially this moment in American society, what our Muslim brothers and sisters are up against. So to be together with our African-American Christian brothers and sisters, our white Christian brothers and sisters, and our Muslim community together to fight intolerance and injustice in all forms, uh, it was really important to do that work together. Different ways, it says you shall love the stranger because it is 36 times harder to get to know and not just tolerate, not just accept, but to love the person who is different than you. We need to start loving more and being proximate. But we have to be intentional so that we're not just passing each other in the night, but we're really beginning to learn each other's stories, each other's background, each other's histories, so that we can truly work genuinely together. So what are you guys doing from a national standpoint and with your, your voices, your congregations, to be a louder voice for the church, which I would say is the truer voice of, of how we really should engage with um, each other? There's a whole new wave of religious expression in this country that is decidedly non-political. And part of it is an exhaustion with a kind of politics that they don't want any affiliation with but not a readiness to engage some of the issues that we've been talking about today. 
there's a lot to be done there, but at least we can have a conversation. And I'm finding that to be fertile ground. We're working on that uh, to try to make sure that we do a more effective job because the religious right has hijacked what it means to be a Christian. And it, as we're seeing today, it has so much to do with regressive kind of things, turning back the hands of time. I'm feeling today some encouragement. I had several young people and others to come up to me and they appreciated what the panel said and how we handled the questions. And they're excited. Well, the consequences of not talking about it are clear. Um, as we stay in our silos, so we're attempting to experiment with the harder but more beneficial track, which is to gather together and have a conversation about how we can do better. America is defined by this issue of the color line, and that's what we have to come to grips with, that's what we have to address uh, and face and confront honestly, and then decide what we're going to do about it.